Hello YouTube, welcome to another challenge here. My name is Fluffy Wolf, and I will be your deck pilot today, playing Pyro Prison, Red Prison, and the challenge. The challenge is actually just completed, so I'm actually doing the intro at the very end, but hopefully you'll enjoy it. What we've done today is spliced it all together, and so you're going to see all the matches in order on one video. Let me know what you think about this format versus the one and single formats of every match. So if it was seven, eight, nine matchups, we'd have seven, eight, nine videos. Or if you like this one long video, I'll also probably in the description below put some Im information and links. But if you don't want to know how many matches we go in total, maybe avoid that and kind of skim through the video as we play. Enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, hit that like button, thumbs up subscribe here on YouTube, or join us live on Twitch, and our schedule there is in the bottom left. Let's get to the challenge. Hello. Welcome. We haven't recorded any intros here, but here is the list. Here's the list. We have the Red Prison, Pyro Prison list we're going to run here. Uh, just a few slight changes from the previous challenges. We have an extra Koth, an extra Chandra, a few less Karns here. Uh, we still have quite a few artifacts on the board, but we have a few aggro pieces as well. Walking Ballista makes its debut here in the main again. No Kranko. We're bringing a Legion War Boss back as well. A few different lands here, mainly mountains, because we do have Koth of the Hammer as well in here. Challenge is about to start. We have 134 give or take participants, which actually means it would be eight rounds. We'll see though, we may or may not play them all again. Just depends on whether or not we get through to having a, a good enough record. With that though, we'll go ahead and get into match one here. Fingers crossed for a good opponent and a good start here. Let's try not to uh, get into the loser's bracket immediately. We uh, won the dice roll, so we'll play first. We do have a turn two Legion War Boss here against an unknown opponent. I suppose I'll keep this, although it could could come back to bite us here. This one's a little of a loose keep here, but we don't know what our opponent is on. Aether Vial looks like it's humans. If it is humans, I probably want to get this war uh, bridge down. It is a creature based deck, so let's go ahead and get the bridge down and then pass turn. Our war boss shouldn't be able to kill them very easily through a lot of creatures. If they're merfolk, we're looking pretty good. If they're humans, we're looking pretty good. Um, if they're spirits, we're looking really, really good. <clears throat> now our, our bridge is going to only come online here in a little bit. Double island here, it's feeling like merfolk, which actually is a good, a good one for us. Spreading seas on our mountain, pass turn. I don't want to be drawing too many mountains here. Legion War Boss attack on your turn. Island and Harbinger. So we are against Merfolk. It is confirmed at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and just swing here. The Abraid definitely could take care of the Aether Vial. I don't know if that's what I want to be doing here. Uh, if it's a Lord effect, maybe maybe we just try to clear their board here. We're going to bounce the token. All right. I think here I'm actually okay to just destroy this artifact. If they want to trade one of these, they can trade one of them. That's fine. We will pay for that. We had nothing else going on this turn anyway. A block here is good. <clears throat> Opponent's turn. Silvergill Adept, revealing Lord of the Atlantis, and then attack from my opponent. Let's go ahead and use a scry land here. Try not to draw so many uh, lands. Uh, I'll take an extra bridge here, just in case they have something like a repeal. If they have something like Echoing, though, then this uh, extra bridge doesn't do a lot. If opponent plays land and attacks in, they can't really play the Lord of Atlantis. It'll make their creatures too big. Go ahead and 
jam out our extra bridge here. Spell Pierce will uh, pay for that. Do they have another one? They do not. This avoids a cryptic command as well. Sometimes they've been running those. All right. The Biomancer here. We'll pass turn back. <clears throat> Just drawing lands. They increase Biomancer here. Thassa. It's kind of annoying because Thassa is going to draw them into some some pieces that they might use with her scry ability. They put the card on top. They liked it enough. We'll go ahead and cast Simeon Spirit Guide here. Play our land down past turn. Whatever they kept must be good. Well, they kept it and didn't do anything with it. There's a land. I'm looking for a win condition at this point. And our opponent may actually have no out to this. They may just be wondering what our win condition is at this point. Um, this guy will work as a win condition. One, two, three, four, five. I think here it's safe to go ahead and get something like liquid metal coating. It's also probably safe to go ahead and get like Torp Orb. So let's go ahead and get a Torp Orb. Play our Torp Orb out and pass turn. We'll have Lattice on board next turn. They could have a Cryptic Command here. They have a Cryptic Command and they stop us. Let's go ahead and start with the Lattice here. Let's go ahead and tap correctly so we can play the Slagstorm after. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll play Lattice here. If they have the counter, they do, they do not. Um, let's just kill all the creatures and pass turn. At this point, I just need a Chandra or a creature. We have my opponent completely locked out. And they concede. Sweet. All right, let's go to sideboard. Let us go to sideboard here. There we go, sideboard. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. I think for our little fishies, our rabble masters are probably not getting through. Our opponent was playing also a lot of basics, although I do know they have muta vaults and other things, but a blood moon or two could come out as well. What are we looking at on our side? We probably want Angers are probably considered here. The bridge could be in or out depending on if we think we can get to Karn. I'm kind of thinking that we don't want to be worrying about this Karn necessarily. We have other win conditions. So let's take the Karns out. Let's bring the bridge in. Oops, Karn's down here for a moment. I think with regard to that, I think it's fine to bring Hazard in. Hazard could be bounce to our hand but i think also hazard's just another two damage chandra's are two damage coths are extra damage here i think we can consider some torp orbs at this point then as well if we're going to be taking out what we see here now if you were to go leave karn in i'd probably just take the bridge and the torp orb out <clears throat> which is certainly an, an idea let's let's think about this for a moment we we're gonna leave two Karns in here. We could go get Bridge, mm -hmm. Torpor, we can go get Liquid Metal if we tend to spike it on turn one, two, three. Uh, it does shut down their Aether Vial. That's kind of a reason to keep it. Mm -hmm. Lattice, Lock would be possible, although they probably will be bringing in things to bounce our stuff. I think this is worth a shot since we're up a game. Let's go ahead and take out, and let's leave Blood Moon in. Let's take out a War Boss in place. We're going to bring in Angers, Hazard, and Torp Orb here for four Ravels and one Legion War Boss. We'll leave Bridge and Torp Orb in the deck, in the sideboard. <clears throat> so if we see a fast Karn, we know it's a potential for a Bridge. We have to remember that Ceremonious Rejection is a thing. This is why Chalice remains still in the, the main deck. It also is an easy way to get rid of cards out of the hand. All right, we'll keep this. It's a turn one of Braid, which is nice. It has the Blood Moon in case they don't have 
<clears throat> some stuff going on for them. I don't see any reason to run the Simeon Spirit Guide out. Let's go ahead and pass the turn here. Or run the Blood Moon out. If we were on boil, I think we'd be pretty happy. But we're not. Again, no real reason to throw something in here. We have plenty of mana. My opponent's not doing anything. I actually think I'm kind of okay to go ahead and just try to kill this. No reason really to let my opponent get any damage in. Maybe they'll use a spell pierce. There's Karn. Let's do this off a of ritual in case they have a spell pierce. If we ritual here and then we play Karn, they'll play spell pierce potentially. And I have Simeon Spirit Guide to pay for this. Our Blood Moon's not doing too much. It looks like my opponent might be on some sort of... Mm. You could you could make an argument for a lot of different possibilities. Let's go grab Liquid Metal Coating here. So it's not our bridge. Silvergill Adept. So we actually may just be playing Liquid Metal Coating and ticking up here. We do find one of our creatures here. Let's go ahead and start with liquid metal coating, and we probably will be ticking up here. This should slow my opponent down. Obviously, a bridge isn't going to stop the Silvergill attempt from attacking, so this is one reason we didn't grab that just yet. Spell Pierce. Ceremonious Rejection. It's hard for my opponent to Ceremonious Rejection because I can go get something like a bridge. Let's go ahead and turn this off. I assume my opponent will float some mana here. I'm cool to just kill this. And I'm cool to pass turn here. A land wouldn't be too bad here. Alright, looks like Karn is going to get hit a little bit here. With three damage. We do find our land. So we'll go ahead and play the war boss. It is very likely that we are going to lose our war boss here, blocking. Although if they just go after just a uh, just Karn, maybe we just let it through. I could be killing Lord of Atlantis here. I think killing Lord of Atlantis is okay here to do. Uh, we are going to lose Karn here, but I think Karn's done a good amount of damage to them at the moment. Chandra. Okay, we got rid of a spell pierce. My opponent's been holding those spell pierces here. If we do top deck, say, a braids, I could go after lands or their creatures, if their creatures get too big. On attacks. Slagstorm's nice here. Let's go ahead and deal three damage to each creature. I like leaving two up in case they have spell pierce here. We'll pass. We're in a good position against our merfolk player here. Something tells me they have stuff on like three and four here. A little surprising. Play war boss, attack with war boss. We shouldn't win with this war boss, but if we do get enough damage in here without them drawing maybe another land, it could uh, it could impact. Our opponent, by the way, apparently has only islands. We're gonna attack with everything here. We're doing this because I'd rather trade now than wait for another Lord effect. They don't want to trade with us. That's fine. Play our Blood Moon and pass turn. <coughs> the big question here is if we would have gotten Bridge, would it have stuck? And I don't think it actually would have. Miro Redri, three threes all around. 
Go ahead and cast and throw our goblin to the wayside here. Now my opponent has island walk, so if they get a spreading seas, there it's a fairy conclave. Our blood moon's gonna do a little bit of action here. Mirror Regery untaps, maybe plays a lord behind this. Playing a lord behind this is gonna be rough for us to kill. Because now their creatures are very big. We need to untap twice. We do need something like a bridge here. Because these are gonna be massive. I can triple block. I think I will. We're not really doing much unless I top deck a bridge here. All right, let's go to game three. <laughs> game three. Part of me wishes I had boil, that's for sure. Was our liquid metal coating a incorrect play? I can't say it was or wasn't. Can't say if it was or wasn't. All right, the big question is, is Karn really necessary here? Although Karn really helped us there a little bit there, I can't imagine it's better than maybe just going after our Torpor of a bridge, or maybe we're supposed to actually go ahead and tutor our bridge to be a little more safer. I'm gonna take one Chalice out here and bring in perhaps this extra Torpor. I could go out another Chalice potentially. If I went out another Chalice, I'd probably bring in a War Boss. I think one Blood Moon out for a War Boss is okay. We did see Fairy Conclave, but we're not seeing like... We haven't seen Mutavault. We haven't seen many non-islands from our opponent. I like this. Let's go ahead and go with this. All right. So we know what we want in our opener for sure. We're looking for Bridges, Angers... Maybe a fast Chandra or a Koth. Let's play first. No lands. Uh, I can't keep no lands. We'll mulligan. I can't keep one landers either, really. Even though I do have a scry. Our Blood Moon's probably not online. Our Anger potentially just gets spell pierced here. All right, we'll keep this. We do need an extra land. I'm gonna keep the bridge here. It's a little bit riskier to keep, but it is our way of probably winning this. We do have Walking Ballista to stop something. Um, Aether Vial's not too scary here. We're gonna go ahead and play Walking Ballista. One, to get it out of hand. Two, to kill any X1s. We're a little worried about this Aether Vial. Uh, it allows my opponent to have mana up which will kill our bridge, unfortunately. There's a Karn. It's not very good. Go ahead and pass turn here. Trickster. All right. Our Walking Ballista is tapped here. I don't know if Anger is enough to bait out a counter from my opponent. It's probably relatively strong. Also only getting one card here. Maybe I'm supposed to just war boss here. Let's go ahead and war boss. Try to get a few more things. We also have the walking ballista. The walking ballista could ping a lord if, if we need to. We're probably baiting here with this anger. There's another 2-2 two, two there. I'm gonna hold our ground here. They're going to leave up probably the islands as long as they can. All right. Attacks for three and three only here. I think to keep our life total high, I could block here. Let's go ahead and take it this turn. I 
of taking it, I was hoping maybe they'd flash something in or something. I, I don't know. I expect them to leave this mana open. All right, so we have a Simeon Spirit Guide here. I think the safest thing for our bridge is to kill, attempt an, a kill here. We're gonna send in the one goblin here. Just like nothing's changed. Unfortunately, we don't have the second mana here, but if I can get the second mana for the bridge, maybe we're good. So we'll attempt an anger here. And I will allow this to resolve without using Walking Ballista. All right. Countered. It's an interesting counter that they have. Wizard's Retort. We are definitely gonna be blocking some stuff here. Uh, scariest thing for us to see is a Spreading Seas. Three mana. Please Redry in. Are we gonna get fancy with these? Okay, Master of the Pearl Trident. I don't think we're dead just yet, right? That's all of their cards here. 11. Oh, we are dead. <laughs> all right, looks like my opponent taps us down. Wizard's Retort would have countered the bridge anyway. All right. Loser's bracket it is, as always. We'll see if we can keep the winning streak alive in the next rounds. We'll see you in the next match. See you in the next match. All right, back for round number two. Match two. We've uh, made this very difficult for ourselves. We've uh, lost the first round again. It's time to time to win out, right? Time to win out. We will see. We will see. Here we go. Match two. Gotta win it. Gotta win it. We had a good chance against our first opponent, but that did not happen. All right, let's play first. All right, we'll keep unknown opponents. Don't mind where we're at here. And Rabble Master, we could Scavenging Grounds if they're Dredge. We can Walking Ballista. Probably don't want humans with this starting hand. A lot of other decks that we're, we're all right against. All right, let's play Mountain Pass turn. All right, Arid Mesa. Looks like it's burn. Oh, all right, Scavenger Grounds is online. It's Faithless Looting. Stinkweed and Prized Amalgam. Wonder if we can let this go. If I let it go and attack with Goblin or Rabble Master, I think I have to let it go for one turn here, but show the Scavenger Grounds. They can dredge once here if they'd like. Scavenger Ground's gotta put a brakes on that, though. There's an Archamoeba. There's a Life from the Loam as well. Can we beat an Archamoeba here? I think we can. That being said, we're setting ourselves back quite a bit here. They dredge Stinkweed. Let's go ahead and exile the graveyard here. Was it right to wait a turn? Eh, only time will tell. Only time will tell. We'll be playing Walking Blist unless we hit a... Unless we hit something that, that lets us ramp out Rabble Master. Blood Crypt for my opponent. Tapped, past turn. All right, no ritual spell, so we'll just play Walking Ballista past turn. We might be playing Blood Moon to shut them off of multicolors. They get this Blood Crypt tapped. They don't have a Cathartic. They don't have another Faithless Looting, so that was good for us. All right, Walking Ballista is in play. Opponent's turn three. Copper Lion Gorge. Plays Stinkweed. Passes turn. 
You don't have to necessarily run Rabble Master into this. It's not doing a whole lot. Let's just play Blood Moon here and pass turn. Uh, Stink, we can just chill there. If they were planning to play a few creatures and block, we'll, um, we'll play around that. Land and pass his turn, it appears. No attacks. Let's go ahead and Rabble Master here and pass turn. We're not going to kill Stinkweed until we feel it's necessary. I can block this all day, that's fine. Doesn't kill Stinkweed, my opponent's not doing a whole lot. We could beef up Walking Blist a few turns if we'd like. I'd love to find maybe another Rabble Master effect. No effects from my opponent. Just drawing cards they can't cast. Alright, there's a Ritual and a bridge. We're going to go ahead and do that so that we can go wide with our goblins. Assuming we hit lands, we can uptick Walking Blist a few times. <clears throat> There's a Faithless Looting. If they hit any dredgers, it may be time to try to, to get through this. Draw this card too. Two life from the Loams. Those aren't the scariest things. They Faithless Looting again. Looks like they're going to double dredge here. Dredge, dredge. They have another Stinkweed Imp down here. They have two Stinkweeds in the in the yard here. It's probably time to try to get through this Stinkweed here. Or we play Karn here. Karn and Tormod's Crypt. Seems really good. Let's go ahead and do that. That should buy us some time here. And if we top deck the land, we'll be in great shape. All right, let's stop that from my opponent and pass turn. <clears throat> Karn was actually a very good top deck there. One land and we l Lattice. Bloodman's probably doing a lot more work here, and our initial scavenger grounds did a lot. Opponent concedes. We're going to go to sideboard here. There's our land, by the way. Okay. So Karn is reasonable to go get Tormod's Crypt. The question is, do we want Tormod's Crypt in? Um, in some ways, we need to be aggressive against this opponent. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the chalices out. Opponent tends to not need get round chalice they have ancient grudges that they'll probably be doing mm -hmm. that might be a reason to leave Karn in Eidolons aren't really hitting too much they're not casting much so let's go ahead and put those to the side here mm -hmm. uh, the big questions are maybe bridge bridge maybe a torpor orb here a hazard angers the question also is is Tormod's Crypt better main board or sideboard here if we can get the Karn out, then we can just go grab it. So it's a two of here instead of a one of. That might be worth it in itself. Hazard, Torpord, and Angers look fine here. Chalice looks bad. I could see myself removing one bridge. You're more likely to kill their creatures or beat them down quick enough than to be hiding behind a bridge. I like these changes. I do like Eidolon, but I think Eidolon will hurt us more than them. I have a feeling they're going to be looking for something that gets rid of Blood Moon or Bridge, so bringing in Angers and just kind of nixing the Bridge plan is not a bad idea. I could see Eidolon in here, but I think Eidolon and them having Creeping Chills is just going to be a, a big problem for us. So we're not going to give them that option. Not going to give them that option. All right, we have a slag storm to reset things, avoid. I'm going to keep this. There's no faithless looting. There's no real graveyard hate here, but we have to remember that we have one scavenging grounds and then two Karns. Bloodcast and, and Stinkweed Imp over here. Uh, we were meant to avoid there. <clears throat> I don't think it'll hurt us, though. 
Opponent hits double creeping chills, and they have a Conflagate that they've milled over as well. It's pretty good. My opponent is miles ahead of us now. Miles. Faithless looting. Nothing to dredge here. It's sort of notable. Bloodgast. Gonna bring some stuff back here. We might be having to use this slag storm. Prized amalgam. Returns from the graveyard. Alright. Bridge is actually a fine pickup. We'll play our void out. I don't need the land, we'll bottom that. So our, our void got actually use. I think here I just have to take two from the blood ghast and maybe abrade the prized amalgam. It's not ideal though. There's another blood ghast. They play land, they hit us for four. Makes the blood ghasts a threat. Let's go ahead and get rid of this prized amalgam here and pass turn. Not too wild about the position that we're in. If they have another land, it's just Confrogate and like just destroy us next turn. All right, they don't really hit anything off of that. Uh, here we're gonna go ahead and deal three damage to each creature and pass turns. Really our only thing. They do get a prized amalgam here. If they have land plus this Confrogate, they're going to get one, two, two, four, seven, and more. Doesn't look like they have it, though. No land for my opponent. No uh, life from the loam. Gives us a fighting chance, albeit a very small one. We can play bridge and get down to two cards, but that doesn't get us down below the blood ghasts here. My opponent does play a blood gas. We need uh, something like an anger, I believe, here to have a shot at this game. We'll need an anger. Find a legion war boss. So I can get down to three cards here: three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They also have a conflagrate over here. If I were to make a blocker, they get three, four, five, six, seven, and then they have enough to do two damage as well. All right, got to go on to the next next game here. That one's not winning. We had a couple pieces of removal, and we just drew kind of the the wrong side here. My opponent had a good good fast start. Let's sideboard. Sideboard here. We want to be aggressive. Um, although putting Karn and not having Tormod script feels a little awkward, but maybe we just need to go for it and hope we have it in the starting hand because we're going to try to be more aggro. Let's go ahead and bring Karn out and Tormod script in, and that's going to be our only swap here. I could see maybe one Karn out and a bridge, but I'm going to leave one Karn in as a go grab something we need. Maybe we need to protect a bridge that we drew with the Chalice. Maybe we need the extra bridge. We're going to try to be a little more aggressive here. Try to get that turn one, turn two Rabble Master. Or have the Tormod's Crypt plus a very good block package. Let's play first. Uh, this is not any of that. One land, I can't guarantee I'm going to get that second land. The Anger's good here, as is the Karn. But we're not going to get there, I don't think. Can't, can't hope. This hand's excellent. We're going to go ahead and play this hand. Uh, the Tormod script we can wait on here until we need to. And finding an extra land here would be absolutely amazing. I would scry a mountain to the top here. Opponent's gone to four cards here. Uh, ooh, Anger's nice, but I do need to hit my third land. Third land is necessary here. I'm not going to play Tormund Script. I don't want them to just nature claim it out of nowhere. I want them to put something in the graveyard if possible. All right, we'll pass turn here. Again, we can wait on this Tormund Script. They shouldn't have too much that's instant speed to put something in the graveyard here. Copperline Gorge. 
All right, we're gonna just play War Boss here, I think. Ooh. Uh. I'm gonna go ahead and play the War Boss. I can play Blood Moon next turn. If they have creature removal, they have creature removal. I would then entertain maybe Tormod Script at the end step. Or in the main phase. All right, we have a Stinkweed Imp. This is fine for us. We have the ability to now um, Blood Moon here. I can probably play the Tormod Script if I wanted to, just to get rid of this. We'll attack for two here. I would have to watch out for something like an Abrade. I think I can wait till next turn to do the Tormod Script plus Abrade. Maybe encourage them to use their graveyard here with maybe a Faithless Looting. It punishes us if they have Faithless Looting plus land, though. But now I can abrade this and get rid of the graveyard and then just attack in for enough damage, I think, over the next two, two, three turns. So let's go ahead and remove Stinkweed Imp here. The other thing I can do is just play this Tormod script out. I could play this out and not use it and let them go ahead and dredge with Stinkweed Imp. I can hit anything that they do hit in the graveyard. I think that's what we do. We just leave the Stormod script here until we need to, to action it. So Tormod script, fast turn. We should be ahead of our dredge opponent at this point. I'm fine with them dredging the Stinkweed Imp. They do go after this, so I think I just have to fire this off now. We were kind of concerned about something like an Ancient Grudge. We have a backup anger in case things go awry here. My opponent's top decking. And we knew they'd bring things in like Ancient Grudge. Our sequencing last turn was important. Uh, best draw here would be... Oh, this is our, our right draw. Prevents like prized amalgams showing up. Our best draw there was probably Hazard or Chandra. Opponent's at five. I think we have this from our Drudge opponent. Tormod script is really paid off here. I'm starting to think that it's not a bad option. Game one from Karn. It definitely helped us game one, if I recall, right? Unless I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I'm not totally sure what my opponent could do here. We have five represented here. If they confrogate to kill this, then I still have five. If they somehow establish a ridiculous board here, Faithless Looting into, well, Tor Torpor Orb's probably gonna stop a lot of that. I think we have it here. I would be surprised if my opponent gets out of this. And we got it. And we got it. Match two. We've made this difficult for ourselves. We're in the loser's bracket, but we can win it. We can, we can get those top 16 points. That'll do it for match two. We'll see you in match three. And we're back. Match three, round three. Playing some Pyro Prison in the Modern Challenge. Well, we started off rocky. We've climbed back. We're going for that top 16. That is always our goal. Top eight is amazing, and top 32 is always welcome, but top 16 is always our priority. We made it difficult this challenge of our initial loss and if you haven't seen that go check out those previous videos or rather just watch a few minutes back all right we won the die roll let's play first one land one land unknown opponent we can't keep this all right pair of lands we do get to rabble master or something we're gonna keep this uh we do need to hit our third land and then need to hit something else but Unknown opponent, I think I'll go ahead and keep this. Seems reasonable. We're gonna keep, they do mull to six as well, joining us on our mulligan journey. I will, let's bottom this. I know that's a bit risky, but something just tells me I'm going to draw another one. Going to draw another one. <clears throat> our opponent bottomed as well. Now we'll probably regret this if we don't draw land for a while. 
That being said, our opponent is human, so maybe I don't regret it as much. Alright, we're gonna start out with Rabble Master here and a swing in. <clears throat> we might be regretting this against this human opponent soon. Cavern of Souls, do we have a two drop here? I'm expecting a two drop, probably in the form of Thalia. A land here would be great, get rid of Thalia. All right, we may have regretted. We picked up two Chandras here, not what we want to be doing against a human opponent. Are we regretting that land yet? Not quite, although we're getting very close to regretting it. I will take a land or a walking ballista at this point. Let's see what my opponent wants to do here. Blue, red, green, not white, green, white, Mantis Rider. Mantis Rider it is. Hits for five, probably. Does not, let's stay on the defense. We do hit our land. That is good. We probably want to kill this Thalia. I think I'm okay with attacking with everything here and then just killing Thalia. If they block Mantis Rider with Rabble Master, then I think I would be willing to trade. Let's go ahead and kill Thalia here, and we'll get him for our one. Obviously, Rabble Master sticks around here. I can follow it up with an extra war boss here, although it's probably not what I want to be doing. If I can, Chandra tick down, kill Mantis Rider is maybe where I want to be. A Phantasmal image copying Rabble Master could be problematic here. Could be problematic. Also copying just Mantis Rider could be very problematic as well. In fact, they might just copy Mantis Rider if they're doing that. Blue, red, white. Doubling down on Mantis Riders here. Hitting for six. Boy, do I need a land now. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and swing in with everything. Maybe I can trade one of these. This is a good sign trading here for us. It's a good sign because we have a Blood Moon here. Blood Moon's going to shut everything off. We do need that one extra land here. <laughs> need, need one more land. There's an Aether Vial. Okay. Opponent's still in the game, still in the game. We do hit our land, perfect. We're gonna play our Chandra out. We're going to kill our Mantis Rider here and swing for one. We're in a good position now against our human opponent. They're gonna be able to play one thing a turn. I think if they were to play, for example, Noble Hierarch off of this, I might actually try to ritual out and do something with it. All right, uptick here. Chandra, just gonna jam our war boss here and swing with two goblins. Our uh, Chandra went over a mountain, by the way, which is fine. We would have scried that with our void. All right, opponent's got a two drop coming here. They might do this when we uh, attack in. which is probably reasonable for them, or they just give it up. All right, they give it up. We were going to, they'd have a block for maybe war boss here. I then attack for one, two, three, four, plus an uptick, five, six. They're probably trading unless it is Thalia. And then unless they have a Mantis Rider behind that, we're upticking Chandra and upticking for the last points of damage. Karn was probably gonna be useless there. Karn is actually one thing I do pull out here. We're gonna consider Torpor Orb, Incinerian Bridge, Angers here. I'm gonna take Karns out. Now typically I would typically uh, I would take out excuse me. <clears throat> Alright. Typically I would take out more Karns if I was using those, but I'm not in this build. 
I am going to take some Rabble Masters out, though. We don't want to bring Hazard in because Hazard is going to get copied and then we lose. We've had that happen. Chalice is okay. I think I'm okay with still leaving all the rituals in. I do know Thalia is a problem. But we're gonna be looking for we're gonna be looking for angers and slag storms. Then we'll be looking for this combination here. We'll probably be looking for something like Walking Blista, and then Blood Moon is probably up here. Up here or up here, depending on if we get some rituals. So we have 15 cards we truly want here. Legion War Boss is a little bit weak. I don't have really anything else to bring in. You could arguably take one Legion War Boss out and bring a Karn in. The problem with doing that is that Karn is really expensive and difficult to play. <sighs> we'll get it stuck in the hand against Athalia. I almost could guarantee it. Chalice needs to go on one pretty quickly. Torp Orb is our saving grace against Deputy. Bridge and Blood Moon. I think if I could get a Torp Orb into a Blood Moon, I'd be pretty happy. Okay, we have an interesting hand here. It's interesting because we can start really beating down. I actually like the idea of trying to do this. We also get fairly empty-handed quickly for our bridges and, and such. I'm going to greedily, greedily keep this. Uh, we're going to get rid of the ritual. In the event that I top deck a ritual, we'll use that, and then we have three creatures behind this. Keep in mind that this is relatively dangerous against my opponent. Aether Vial from my opponent. All right. Let's start the beatings, chat. Let's start the beatings. This also gives us some blockers and probably gives us time. This is why we keep War Boss in over Rabble Master. If it was Rabble Masters, I'd probably have to ship this hand. All right, opponent's got all of their colors online. They're not quite at three mana yet, but that's okay. I'm expecting Thalia here. Having the fourth land against Thalia is also not too bad here. I'll need a fifth for a few things. Mm -hmm. uh, walking Ballista is nice. We're going to go ahead and War Boss, though, and then see if I can get Walking Ballista on two. I will just attack with Goblins this turn. Pass turn. They're not going to block with a Noble Hierarch. They're not going to block with a Champion here. The Aether Vial is fine. So this is a relatively aggressive hand for what we're looking at. I'm probably attacking with everything and using Walking Ballista to pick off Thalia if, if possible. Aether Vial here. Oriok Champion, that's a good one to pick off with Walking Ballista. This looks like a Mantis Rider behind this. That's also a very good one. I can use Walking Ballista to pick both of these off, and then I have just a 3-3 blocking. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 damage coming through. We have the back backup Slag Storm as well. I'm really thinking that I'm supposed to go ahead and just use Walking Ballista to remove these. The other thing I could do is just remove Thalia and plan to pump this next turn, which is probably not a bad idea either. The Oriarch Champion, though, gains some life because we're not getting in. That being said, if I hold Walking Ballista, maybe they're a little bit afraid here? I think I'm supposed to just kill... So if I kill Oriarch Champion here, and then I get in, I can throw this face as well. They block one Legion War Boss. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 that comes through this turn. Putting them to nine. The following turn, we have two, two twos, this. They might be Aether Violating something in. I think it's worth a shot here. We've gone kind of the aggro plan. I don't think there's a reason to hold back here. So we'll attack with the whole team here. They'll probably block one Legion War Boss here. That seems safe. And we'll take them to 11. So next turn, one, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to probably have some blockers. Let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Plus the Slag Storm if they have nothing here. They surely have something. But we're very, very close. Horizon Carianope cracks. 
We're very close to killing them, which is surprising with the war boss plan here. It curved out just right, though, and we did get a walking blister, which probably saved us here. Three cards in my opponent's hand. This is on three. Another blocker is obviously a problem. Vials in, something on three. Reflector Mage is a little bit annoying. But if they Reflector Mage Legion War Boss, there's an argument to just slag storm their board. Bouncing Reflector Mage, Legion War Boss. This is like actually not too bad. We get two points of damage in here and then we clear their board. This is maybe not a bad idea. Let's see what's on top. That might help our decision. It's Alpha and Void. Alright. Let's put that on top. I like the attack here, getting in two, putting them to eight, and then slag storming. And then I have the anger behind this again. So if they get a, a board that I don't like here, then we can re slag storm it. We can play war boss behind this as well. My opponent is drawing. If it was, say, a Blood Moon, that would also have been pretty pretty decent, considering the Aether Vial is on three. Champion's not a bad one to go ahead and get rid of. And we have a three drop here, Mantis Rider. I'm really happy with my Anger on top now. We're just going to Anger again. Take three, go to 11. All right, pass turn. They know that was on top, because we have War Boss. I can't play War Boss, unfortunately, but I think I'm okay with removing five points of damage. Again, they're good to play whatever they draw here. Although it looks like maybe they don't have enough here. Maybe they have a bunch of Phantasmal images, which I think I'd continue playing on. Um, as soon as I play the War Boss in, then they could copy it. We are drawing into another Anger and a Bridge and a couple War Bosses. I, I think we were definitely ahead of our our opponent, but I don't know if they should have scooped there. Uh, I have to probably play this to close the game out. They play their own. I'd have an anger right behind it and then repeat. But there you go. Beating humans, which is a good time. We'll see you guys in the next match. Round four, match four. Playing Pyro Prison here. Let's keep the win streak alive. We, we have the possibility to keep it alive, as always. Hoping for that good matchup here. <clears throat> we'll see how it goes here. <laughs> Just gotta hope. Just gotta hope. Let's see if we can get the play. We do not. We do not. We'll have to be on the draw here. We'd have a Chalice, a Slow Blood Moon. We do have an Abrade, though. I think against an unknown opponent. This was... A reasonable seven. We'll keep Gemstone Shriekhorn. So we're looking at needing to beat Dredge here. Dredge will be a little bit difficult to beat here with this hand, but maybe our Blood Moon can keep them off of some Life from the Loam shenanigans. Creeping Chill and a Faith is looting. No Dredge cards. Life from the Loam and Stomping Ground. Actually looks like exactly what they needed. Unfortunately for us, we may be abrading this Shriekhorn. Three lands here. Four. Fetch Shock, it looks like, and we're probably going to be... Oh, nope, Faithless Looting here. Chalice on one would stop these. They've already used two, though. I guess it would stop a couple Shriekhorns as well. Let's see what they've been here. Dark Blast and a Life from the Loam. Nothing too frightening here. So I think the play here is probably a Chalice on one, although we could make an argument for maybe getting rid of this Shriekhorn here as well, and then worry about maybe Tormod's Crypt behind this. They do Faithless Looting with the Gemstone. They're probably dredging life from the Loam here. 
Maybe I'm supposed to just ritual out the Blood Moon. This does put Karn back a turn. I might just kill the Shriekhorn, honestly. Let's kill the Shriekhorn here. <clears throat> we can ritual out Karn and go get our Tormod script. This kind of interests me a little bit more. There's a prized amalgam, but they don't have any creatures. Scalding Tarn. I'm expecting them maybe to do Life from the Loam here. They're going to Faithless Looting instead because they have the three lands and they got a Stinkweed Imp here. <clears throat> There's a Narc Amoeba that we have to beat. So we have to beat two Prized Amalgams and, a, and two Narc Amoebas, it looks like. So we're exactly one turn off from our Tormod script doing enough here. I'm expecting all of this to come back here. And it does. And they hit another prized amalgam out of all of that. So we get Karn and get rid of Confrogate. I think that's what we have to do to have a shot at this game. But that's probably about all we're gonna be able to do. I expect them to kill Karn here, especially since we're going to be getting rid of their graveyard. They could go just directly at us. If they did, we need a land. Well, no, land and Blood Moon won't do, or land and more Boston Chalice won't do. All right, plays a land, fetching, mountain. They have life from the loam just in hand. They dredged that, I believe, earlier. I believe one prize amalgam is going to kill Karn, and then the rest are going to kill me here. We're at nine. We do hit a land. I'm going to play Rabble Master here, planning to block. I'm going to block one of these, take three, six, seven, eight. I have a chance if I draw, like, Slag Storm into something. The smallest of chances. That Tormod script being exactly one turn late, though. Maybe the choice of the Chalice on one was supposed to be played. We need Slagstorm here and Slagstorm only. Creeping Shell just cast will do it as well. All right, into sideboard. Into sideboard. Okay. Angers are good here. I'm gonna be on the play. Torp Orbs. Tormod's Crypt. Hazret. Take one bridge out. A Blood Moon. A couple Karns. Let's think here. What did we do before? Chalices as well can be out. So Chalice, Karn, Bridge out, Torpor, Tormod's Crypt, Angers, and Hazard him. I don't know if this is exactly what we did before. It doesn't feel like it. Because we had a little bit of a discussion before about having this Tormod's Crypt in the board and then just having two Karns. I have a feeling this is close to what we did, though. We also talked about just spiking liquid metal coating off of them. All right, so we'll look for Scavenger Grounds and Tormod's Crypt in the opener hand or an extremely aggressive hand. I don't think there's another hand that would uh, beat Dredge here, unfortunately. Now, my opponent will be bringing in things like Nature's Claim and Ancient Grudge. All right, so we have a Scavenger Grounds and we have a removal spell. I guess we'll keep this. It's... It's reasonable. It's not great, but it's reasonable. I could use a Simeon Spirit Guide off the top. Third Mesa from my opponent. Hopefully they don't go too crazy here with their graveyard. Shriekhorn. All right. Azurit. 
Go ahead and play a walking ballista just to get it out of hand. We gotta get the hand empty over time. Opponent's gonna use their Shriek Horn and mill over a life from the loam. Pretty good for them. And mill over another prized amalgam as well. And mills over an Arc Amoeba. Opponent's kinda hitting everything they need here. Kind of hitting everything they need here. We can obviously follow this up with maybe a Rabble Master. By the way, Karn would have been way too slow here anyway. My opponent's got a really good draw from six. Confrogate and Life from the Loam. All right, these come back. All right, well, we do hit a bridge. Gonna be playing this land. Unfortunately, I can't slag storm here. I think I'm just going to be playing. I'm either playing Rabble Master or Bridge here. It's probably Bridge with the idea that slag storm's behind this. We're going to use Walking Bliss to block a prize amalgam, kill the Narc Amoeba. There's another Confogate. This is our great targets for Scavenger Grounds. They do not hit a dredging card, which is good for us. They do have Faithless Looting, though, again. This is the third Faithless Looting. Life from the Loam and a Shriek Horn here. This is a good time to use Scavenger Grounds, although we kind of do need to hit another land. We're going to be blocking and killing. I want to take the least amount of damage. I'm going to just take three here, go to 17. So we hit the Desperate Ritual. I'm really tempted to just go ahead and eat this graveyard with then a Slag Storm behind it. The Life from the Loam is just risky, as is the Faithless Looting here. They could dredge and then get these back. I'd rather probably just go ahead and scavenger grounds here and worry about it. We'll go to end step to do this. See if they would like to crack the bloodstained mire before we can do this in upkeep. I can do this in upkeep. <clears throat> that way we can grab this Bloodstained Mire if they want to fetch. I do fetch. Blood Crypt tapped. Perfect. All right, we'll go ahead and fire this off. It's just one less land in the graveyard. It doesn't really buy us too much, but maybe a Life from the Loam in their hand prevents them from ramping here. Cathartic Reunion gets a Life from the Loam, Dredging, Assassin's Trophy, and a Ghost Quarter goes to the graveyard. Opponent has a Copper Line Gorge here. So I kind of need an Anger more than this Slag Storm. I have a bonus bridge here. So they have a Life from the Loam, so they're going to get most of this back anyway. But I can't let this just hit me, unfortunately. I do need a land, land and then maybe Rabble Master here. My opponent's gonna play their Life from the Loam, play this Ghost Quarter. <clears throat> get Blood Gas back, get both of these back. I've taken care of two Confrogates, but I'm sitting here still having seen uh, no Creeping Chills. So I expect to be dead just from dredging over the course of the game. Land here is important. This is exactly one turn too late. Go ahead and, and dredge. Kill those. Three, six, seven, eight. We're gonna go to three. I have no way to win this. Looks like dredge has got us here. I'm getting stuck on two lands here for a little too long. That's that's the breaks here. 
That's the brakes. Maybe they don't attack me with everything. <laughs> We're still missing our land here, unfortunately. Unfortunately, Goblin must attack. That'll do it. Dredge is going to take us down here. That's two dredge opponents this uh, this challenge so far. Two dredge opponents. And they have a bonus blood gas here. Well, that'll do it. And they had the destroy artifact anyway. So if we had the extra bridge down, we would still be killed here. Well. We're not totally out of it yet, but we're pretty close. We'll join you in the next match and see if we can't win out to get that top, maybe 16 or top 32. Dredge. One and one versus Dredge. That'll do it. And we're back. Back for round five. We're 2-2 two -two right now. We are in trouble of not making the top eight. Um, that's gone. That ship has sailed. Top 16 is a maybe. Top 32 is where we gotta look right now. We'll just have to see. Have to see if we can keep the momentum long enough to get us maybe in one of those top 32 spots now. It is a learning opportunity though now, more than anything. So let's play some magic. See if we can't learn. Something else. We'll keep this. We haven't done a Chandra on turn two in a while. Hopefully no thought sees from my opponent. Cavern of Souls. The humans. We're back to humans. Of note, this challenge has been predominantly very normal meta decks. We haven't run into anything a little bit out there, to say the least. We're going to go ahead and attempt to do something where we Chandra here and then maybe Chalice on one. We might be also doing Chandra and just killing something, although that's probably the weakest thing we could be doing here. This hand's not very good against humans, unfortunately for us. Especially if this is a freebooter. Opponent is reconsidering the freebooter. Thalia slows us down. Thalia it is. We don't have anything to do here on turn two. So we'll just have to pass back. Can't play Chalice on one, can't ritual out to get Chandra. Thalia is probably our worst enemy here. Now they can freebooter. Freebooter here takes probably Chandra, I would imagine. We're gonna be looking for that one main deck slag storm here to take care of the, the board. If we can't do that, they might have us game one. These rituals, by the way, are, are useless. They don't gain us anything because of the Thalia. And following this up with a meddling mage, they might just name Desperate Ritual. They could also name just Legion War Boss at this point. Either of those is going to probably cripple us. Names Legion War Boss, so we can't use this guy. We happen to draw another Legion War Boss. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and put Chalice on one. If they have another Medley Mage and decide to name Desperate Ritual, then even a bridge won't help us. That might be a reason to go ahead and get these Desperate Rituals out of hand. I have a feeling we're just too far behind here on game number one. Phantasmal Image, copying Medley Mage, naming Desperate Ritual? No, they're going to take something from us. Can still spike the Slag Storm here. Slag Storm would get us out of this. My opponent only has two cards. We'll play to see if we can get it. Although they have a lot of creatures here, none of them are doing terrible amounts of damage. We probably have three draws here. Maybe two. Names Illusion with their Cavern of Souls. 
If they illusion meddling mage named Desperate Ritual, that's completely fine. If they do this and name Slagstorm, we're in trouble. If they name Anger, I guess we're fine. We'd have to spike our Slagstorm. They choose Anger the Gods. We're still live. We are still live. Attacks, attacks, attacks. Go to 11. Simeon Spirit Guide. We'll go ahead and jam that little dude out past turn. He'll at least block something here. Draws with Horizon Canopy. Again, our Slagstorm is still live. Two in the air plus Thalia. Seems reasonable. We're slowing our opponent down. Walking Ballista is an interesting one. Hello. What you looking for? Tate? You sure? Okay. Let's go ahead and jam a Walking Ballista here. If we can keep the Walking Ballista alive for a turn here, I could definitely use him positive ways. See what's gonna come in here. Kite mm -hmm. Sail, plus this Kite Sail, plus this Anger of the Gods, this Thalia. If I block here, I'm gonna take one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go to three. I probably am supposed to just pick off Thalia here, right? Let's go ahead and plan to just pick off Thalia here to save us a point of damage. They might have Thalia. They do not. Chalice is not where we wanna be. Let's go ahead and put a counter on this. <laughs> I suppose I could kill this. If I kill this, I'm taking three, but if I'm blocking the Legion War Boss version, the other thing is I can just shoot this for one. So I block here. I'm gonna kill the one with Chandra here. At least Chandra will let me kill the meddling mage, I suppose. I'm taking one. We're not out of it yet, although any creature could ruin this. Illusions. Looks like they're gonna illusions the freebooter? No. Meddling mage to name Chandra here. We can top deck Slag Storm. That's about all we can top deck here. Name Chandra. Double Chalice. Mm -hmm. They're gonna hit us for one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Can't put any blockers. We we gave him a run for it. Gave humans a run for it. The walking ballista definitely kept us in there, but we didn't quite get there. Let's move to Cyborg. Alright. Grab a couple torp orbs here. Bridge, angers. Gonna take Karns out. I'm gonna take some goblins out as well. I'm gonna just do this swap and submit that back. I think we've talked about this matchup before. This is the best I think we can do when we're swapping these out. Blood Moon's very good. A braid's gonna be a removal. Slagstorms and angers are good. <clears throat> Walking Blister was very nice there as well. We have a couple Legion War Bosses. I don't really have anything else to swap them out with. Again, we could do the Legion War Boss and Karn swap here. Right, let's play first. Got a couple of braids here. Uh, let's go ahead and keep this. Having a few of braids here is not too bad. War Boss is not exactly what we want to be doing, but. <coughs> We can maybe do something about this. Play our mountain in past turn. Ancient Ziggurat. Just 
just a noble hierarch to deal with. I'm probably just going to abrade that here. Slow my opponent down. <clears throat> we have war boss and this extra abraid here. Expecting something maybe like a Thalia. Thalia and we find a blood moon, that would be good. It's just a champion. Another one drop, another champion. Two champions to get through. All right. We'll just pass the turn back. I think I might have to abrade this champion that's getting large. Got to keep our life total high here. Keeping the life total high is important. Just a Thalia. We're not so worried about the Thalia. I'm just going to braid the champion here. I can play everything with the Simeon Spirit Guide. So we're not concerned about Thalia as much. I'm going to go ahead and just jam a war boss and pass turn. We're going to be putting blockers down, hoping that my opponent doesn't bounce anything. Thalia also makes their Aether Vial a little more expensive. Not that that should come into play here. Third land for my opponent. Unfortunately, with the next human, the champion's going to get too large. Oriok champion. And a noble behind this. Now the champion's too big for our anger, slag storms, and Oriok champions here as well. I'm definitely going to be blocking at 4-4. I can't take 4 damage here. Alright, looks like we skipped our main phase. Number 1. Go ahead and Ritual and then War Boss here. We'll just pass the turn back. We're blocking again. Needing to get a bridge down at this point. This champion is going to be too large for us to not get a bridge here. Kept a hand with a couple of removal spells. Otherwise, though, it doesn't look like it's going to get us there, unfortunately. Human's taking us possibly down here. Here we go. I think I'll go ahead and just exile this. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter because it can't be taken. Non-creature. Non-creature. We'll definitely block here, take 1, 2, 3 damage here, going to 13. Once again, we do need... Well, Anger is nice. We'll go ahead and kill a few things here. It doesn't kill, unfortunately, Champion because it's too large. But it does remove some of the damage we'll be taking. We can take six here. If they play one creature, then it's a two-turn clock. We could play a Simeon Spirit Guide behind this. This definitely makes it a two-turn clock. So we're going to need Bridge. Bridge is about all I can ask for at this point. This is nine damage coming through. We'll be at four. Got the Bridge. We'll hold Simeon Spirit Guide here. I am expecting something that's going to be able to kill this. I don't think I mind taking one damage here. It does put me at three. A Malcontents already kills us. I kind of want a Simeon Spirit Guide in case they get a Noble Hierarch and can get under our bridge. The bridge looks like it's going to buy us a little bit of time, though. Anything they do play does make this too big to attack. another anchor we're gonna cast Simeon spirit guide here I'm gonna hold anger on the off chance that they get to play a couple nobles 
maybe one behind this. Anger kills the noble, where Simeon's spirit guide doesn't necessarily stop, say, two nobles. Let's see if he attacks here. I don't expect an attack. All right. Chandra's a good draw here. Uptick for damage. Blood Moon would have been the best draw there, perhaps. Well, they do have an island. We're afraid of our bridge getting blown up here, but Chandra is really good. If I'm super concerned, what I could do is down tick on champion and then anger. The Oriarch champion's kind of left over anyway, though. So we're, at this point, that doesn't even make sense now with the second Thalia. So we're just going to go upticking here with Chandra. A lot of things to yield to. Let's yield to this, yield to this, yield to this, yield to this. All right. Torporb is the best draw. Play that. Uptick. And pass turn. We're going to hold this anger again just in case of nobles. But Torporb's probably the best thing we could have seen there. We'll probably have this one. Land, uptick. Gonna say no. Pass turn. We should be able to get Chandra up to eight if we'd like. We should be pretty safe so we can close the door out faster. There's a bonus champion. We could just emblem here. I'm afraid to emblem though. Because if they do get some of the stuff down, it's a problem. I kind of want to go up here. Go ahead and go up here. I'm going to be a little bit greedy, but I don't think we're winning here with just angering. Although I could anger right now. And it doesn't do the five damage up top, but it would get rid of some of the stuff that's a problem for us. If they have a noble behind this. It's a little bit awkward, but we can emblem. Let's go ahead and anger here. <clears throat> well, anger here, although it's a great way to emblem than anger, but if they have something like noble hierarch, we can down tick and then play something and get rid of the noble. Thalia's lieutenant here. All right, now we can emblem. Emblem, play the blood moon. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. There we go. And we should be good from here. Should be good. That was, that, was, that was a scary one. We drew a little bit perfectly there. A little bit perfectly. All right, game three. No real changes, I don't believe. Um, I really would like to see Koth pretty quickly. Yeah. I don't see any changes. Again, you could maybe do Karn, one Karn in instead of Koth or something like that. Do a swap there. But now what are you doing? Are you bringing a bridge out or not? You probably consider it. You might consider your Torp Orb as well. So here we're gonna look for Torp Orb and Bridge pretty quickly. Blood Moon as well is good. And then Angers or, or Braids. We really don't want Legion War bosses. We really don't want Chandra's. Chalice can be later. This hand looks fine. We're gonna keep. And I'm going to get rid of the Desperate Ritual here. Now, if we top deck, say, a Chandra, it's a little bit awkward. But I think I'm going to just rush out this bridge immediately here. I do a champion. Okay, we're looking, we're looking reasonably good here. We're going to go ahead and play bridge before it gets taken. And then I have an Anger behind this. If they play Thalia, I could technically abrade the Thalia as well. If they play a freebooter, 
they're taking stuff from us and I'm not sure what they take here maybe the braid I'm gonna go ahead and take the two damage I definitely need my simian spirit guide here in case they leave me with just the anger of gods I don't imagine they're gonna leave me with the anger of gods though yeah the abraid is what they leave me with I still want to keep the simian spirit guide the goal here will be an upgrade at end of turn here. Koth is kind of the last thing I needed at this point. So they'll enter combat here, I assume. If they try to play something before, I'm just killing champ or I'm just killing Kite Sail and the champion. I'm going to wait until they either play Athalia or they play something else. Three damage is not going to make or break this game. So they're going to play Athalia's Lieutenant here. That's going to make Champion too big to kill. With this resolving, Champion gets plus two, plus two. Everything else, though, kind of gets out of range, though. Am I just killing the smallest thing here? Let's say I draw a land here, and then I can cough. The following turn, I could just anger. This is going to be a problem. We could play towards one land. If we play towards one land, then I probably abrade the Thalia's Lieutenant here. Play towards one land. We do spike our land here. Perfect. All right. We'll just see if they have anything for us. Our uh, mountain can't attack, so it doesn't matter if we pick the summoning sick one. We're hoping hoping for no deputy. It's a small ask. <laughs> small. <laughs> small, but Koth here is definitely what we wanted to do. We can we can cast anything. We can even cast a Chandra, if need be. This Koth is an emblem in two turns here, which could be really good. All right. And the name Wizard here, that's not a good sign. They probably have a deputy. They do not. All right. Well, we'll just go up here, play in another mountain. We will emblem if we get the opportunity here. Fingers crossed that we do. And if we do get to Emblem here, I think we just win this game. We can keep the board clear. We're close. Koth doing work. About time Koth showed up. No deputy, no deputy. And it passes to our turn. We're going to go ahead and Emblem here emblem and we'll just pass it back here we're probably gonna shoot off the kite sail freebooter first and then we'll worry about maybe doing a ritual anger champion ping i want to keep the board as clear as possible but from here i i i don't think we can lose they'd have to have a pretty major turn here here we go searching Draws with Horizon Canopy, plays Horizon Canopy. Draws with the other Horizon Canopy. It's a really good sign for us. Move to end step. We're going to go ahead and shoot Freebooter down. This way it can't grow. We'll have the Anger in hand. Go ahead and to be as mana efficient as possible, we'll go ahead and anger here and pick this off. And then we'll just pass turn. Board is clear. We have an abrade just in case. It can be useful with our gemstone caverns. It's not technically a mountain. I do plan to kill just about anything that shows up. The abrade could also go after a vial if we run into that problem. End step, ping them for one. Pass turn to us. Opponents move to clean up. We're going to play our mountain, pass turn to our opponent. 
We now do four a turn with Koth's emblem. I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Plays an island. It's about time, Koth. It is about time. Plane. A Thalia's Lieutenant. We'll just ping this off. And we will ping them for three. We will attempt to ping them for three. Let's go. There we go. I'm having to right click for some reason. Our turn. Land, pass turn. We do five a turn now, if they play no creatures. They have seven cards. This is their fourth horizon canopy. There's a metally mage. We can utilize this abrade if we wanted to, or we can just ping twice. <laughs> they name a braid. They named a braid. They take a damage off of Horizon Canopy here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and ping this for two before Thalia's Lieutenant shows up here. Allow Thalia's to show up, we'll ping for one. We're gonna ping them now for two. Look for our turn. I'm gonna go ahead and play Chandra here, uptick for damage. It's an extra two every turn. I'm not too worried about having not done maybe all five. This should be this should be enough. <clears throat> Deputy comes in here. Is going to tag. We're not worried what it tags here. I can abrade this if need be, or I can just go for life at this point. We're at 15. Probably gonna go for that flawless, creatureless victory, though. We did get Koth here. <clears throat> Playing the human. Noblest of hierarchs. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and just kill them here. <clears throat> Put them to six, we have five lands here. We can uptick with Chandra if we would like. Here's a land. Let's see here. Damage. Damage followed into a bunch of mountains. And that'll, that'll be game. GG's opponent. GG's, we're getting it against humans. We're falling back into the, the the right habit here. We've been struggling against humans for a little bit. Koth was a uh, Koth was a uh, instrumental there, and we avoided Deputy the Wizard, the Wizard. Torp Orb doesn't need to be brought in here, and we'll finish it out. Damage, damage, damage. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. We can clear it off. We have one damage left to give. We'll clear it off. One here, and one up top. There we go. Got humans. Koth is extremely strong, especially if you just keep drawing lands. The important part, though, is to clear. clear. Um, even if you had a Chandra emblem, you may want to clear as well because you want to avoid Kessig Malcontents killing you. You want to avoid some random thing with your bridge as well. That's going to do it, though, for this match. We'll get to see you guys in the next match. There we go. See you in the next match. And we're back for round six, match six, the challenge. 
We are 3-2. We have an opportunity to make top 32. Let's see if we can do it. Let's start another round of magic. That last one took a little while, so small break between the two. Here we go. Oh no. Why? <laughs> Oh no. Is this the end? Spider space. We'll see what he is on. I do not believe we're well equipped for some of his variations. If you're not aware of who spider space is, go check him out. Pretty, pretty good. All right. Well, looks like we win the match due to inactivity, which is a shame. I'm guessing my opponent lost internet connection or something like that, unfortunately. Uh, we can look at the starting hand real quick here. Uh, definitely keepable. Uh, I'm probably just slamming Chandra or Koth, quite honestly. Based on knowing what my opponent's probably playing, uh, I'm just slamming probably, probably Koth. Mm. Mm. It's really tempting just to slam Koth, quite honestly, because then I'll be at four and then I'll be at five pretty quickly. Uh, Chalice and a Blood Moon right behind it. Eh. Who knows? Unfortunately, that's a no game though. Uh, we'll see you in the next match, chat. And we're back for round seven, match seven. Our last one, uh, unfortunately, was a forfeit due to inactivity. Um, we'll take it, but unfortunately, it was a, <clears throat> a loss to a friend there. Or a, a win, rather. <clears throat> they had a, a small emergency that came up. We're going to try to rally, though, get our last two wins of the day. Get some position in the top 32. We've clawed back. We're 31st. Match 7. Let's play some magic. Got the dice roll as well. I'm going to play first. I'm going to keep this. It's a turn 1 war boss. Not the fastest of the two goblins, but I do have a scry land as well. I'm going to bottom that, and we're just going to go for it. No reason not to. Fire it in. Unknown opponent. We have... Four total lands, so whatever we draw, we will be able to play eventually. Hopefully this doesn't get bolted here. And it does. It does. <laughs> All right. Pull a ritual off the top, so any four drop next turn will be able to be played. We look Jeskai-like. Blue-red, though, probably. Thing of the Ice. All right. Chandra's a good pickup here. Definitely gonna play Chandra here. Chandra tick down, kill thing of the ice. If Chandra gets bolted, Chandra will get bolted. But I'd rather have thing of the ice off because that's a very difficult card for us to deal with in red. Uh, X4 is difficult. Three is not so bad. Opponent fetches with Scalding Tarn. Starts with a Thought Scour. They do not hit any phoenixes at the moment, although Faithless Looting will change that. Bolts Chandra. No other actions here. We get a Blood Moon. I suppose I can go ahead and play said Blood Moon. It does shut off our one of Scavenging Grounds. But I don't think we're winning through Scavenging Grounds here. Maybe if they need Triple Blue for anything, it'll help. For example, Serum, Serum Opt or something like that. We're in an okay position here, game one, against our opponent. Manamorphos makes double red. Faithless looting number one. We're probably going to see double of this. Two arc like phoenixes in the bin. Thought scours. Does not hit any more arc lights, thankfully. Gut shots are last creature and gets both of these phoenixes back. They have triple faithless looting in the yard here. I'm gonna take six. Go to 14. Go 
Could really use a bridge here. Slagstrom's probably not going to do it. So being ahead of our opponent, we are now fairly far behind here. Cashes in one of these Faithless Lootings. Double Arc Light in the bin. So we are dead next turn unless we can find a bridge. Almost guaranteed we're dead next turn. We'll hold the land and pass turn. But a bolt kills us. Three spells kills us. A couple things kill us. Serum Visions. Spell number one. Spell number two. Spell number three. Bolt. They didn't even need the extra phoenixes, but they got them. All right. So, not a bad start, game one. But couldn't close the door here. We'll go to sideboard here for game number two against Blue Red Phoenix. All right, Trinisphere, Tormod's Crypt, Hazret, Angers, Eidolons. We have quite a bit for this. Quite a bit for this. All right, so Eidolons are going to do a lot of damage when my opponent's casting spells. Trinisphere is going to hopefully lock my opponent out from getting Phoenixes from the yard. Tormod's Crypt's just to mess with the yard a little bit, and then Anger of the Gods is to clear the phoenixes if they were to be played what we don't want here is we don't want blood moon necessarily we don't really want karn either probably this puts us into having now four more cards that we need walking ballista probably doesn't do quite enough for us and the abrades are a little bit weaker this slag storm's also a bit weak so there's 10 we're keeping one abrade around. Maybe that braid should just be a walking ballista, quite honestly. It doesn't do a whole lot, but it does get our opponent. Koth and Chandra are okay in this matchup. Not the greatest. But we are looking for something like Trinisphere very quickly. Maybe a Tormod's Crypt, although I'd, I could I could put that later. Eidolon would be fine here. Or a fast Rabble Master. This is kind of what we're looking for. And the rest can come as as we draw it. So go ahead and run this. Fast Trinisphere would be very good against our opponent. It would really, really slow down the pace of the game. That is probably number one card. And then Eidolon is number two. All right, we are on the play. We are fighting for our life here. Let's play first. Well, we have a turn one Eidolon and we have a bridge. We'll keep this. A bolt is a bit of a problem for us. But I think I have to just jam this out with the intention that they're either going to bolt it immediately or they're going to not have the bolt and try to set something up with Faithless or Serum Visions. Mountain Bolt probably. They always have it, right? <laughs> Bolts are idle. It takes two. The Tormod's Crypt's actually not too bad. We'll go ahead and play this out. Now, unfortunately for us against a Phoenix opponent, they can now play sort of around this or try to Ancient Grudge it, but I need it in play compared to something else because having it in play makes them have to attack this, where if it wasn't in play, then we get some kind of weird, weird scenarios here. Ripping the Chalice here, I'm going to go ahead and hold. Attempt to get a Chalice on two. This does shut off quite a few things, but it should lock them out from this bridge being uh, able to be killed, assuming they don't get a Pyromancer's Ascension right here. I'm expecting some sort of counter from my opponent. We'll see, though. Serum Visions from my opponent. Start things off. But I think Chalice plus Bridge should be enough to save us, and they've already used one Lightning Bolt. So the idea here is that we'd be safe. <laughs> that is the idea. The other thing is this chalice could be eating a counter spell from my opponent. Which would be fine. We will attempt the chalice on two. 
I fully expect this to take a remand or other card of similar value. Spell Pierce. We can't really play around the Spell Pierce for quite some time with the bridge. I suppose if I were to top deck a ritual type effect, we could. But we can't we can't always play around that. Arguably we could try to do a chalice on one. That's the thing of the ice. And a serum visions. This is somewhat good news for us. It clears the way for our bridge. Gonna go ahead and play bridge. We're gonna play our Eidolon and we're gonna just pass the turn right back. Eidolon's really good here. We don't have to play every card we draw. Typically we won't actually. Plays a Jace the Mind Sculptor. They're gonna look at the top of our library here. And they do put the card on the top. I'm expecting a land. We're gonna hold the land here so we can attack with Eidolon next turn. Obviously this doesn't get through Thing in the Ice, but we're trying to get two creatures now to pressure Jace. Up they go. We could lose to this Jace. They bottom the card, so we have a fresh draw on top. They're going to flame slash our Eidolon here. Sleight of hand. This would be a good time for them to flip the thing in the ice. Then it would block a lot of things that we could top deck here. The best top deck is probably Koth at this point. We find another land, unfortunately. We'll play our land pass turn. I think we might just get fate sealed out here. We don't really have a way around this chase. Would Chalice on one have been better? Based on seeing what we've seen in terms of cards, yes. They put another card to the bottom. Manamorphose. The other thing they could find here is just a braid and attack us. Just depends on if they care about this Jace staying alive if I find a ritual effect. Faithless looting. So our Chalice on one might have done a little bit more. No attacks. We're going to continue to draw lands, unfortunately, even though my opponent's putting things to the bottom. Looking at the top card here. If they put it on top, I have a feeling we lose. They do put it on top. Looks like Phoenix is going to take us down here. I do not have a card to stop the Jace, unfortunately. Faithless Looting. If we had Karn, I could Liquid Metal Coating, but that's about all I could do. Go ahead and pass to our turn. I have a feeling they're leaving up something like a Remand or a Spell Pierce. We draw another land here and we'll pass the turn. I guess we get one more look at it. One more look. They look at the top card. And they put it on top. I have a feeling it's going to be one more land here, which will mean we have drawn half of our lands in our deck. Not, not bad for turn 10. <laughs> not bad for turn 10. Well, that's going to do it here. Blue Red Phoenix taking us down with the Jace Fate Seal. 
Them bringing in Jace, and I assume it's a brought in card. I don't think this card is main. Definitely, uh, definitely hurts us. But we don't have a way to beat Jace here. That's a bummer. All right, looks like we have one more match. I think it's eight rounds. We'll see what we do in our final round and see where we get placed. See you in the next match. And we're back for match number eight, round eight. This one's been a longer challenge than normal. Going the full eight rounds instead of, say, seven. Sometimes they go seven. I think this is a win and into the top 32. So we may not get top 16 here, but call this our win and in. Let's see if we can do it. Let's play some magic. Match number eight. Here we go. <clears throat> Losing the die roll, not a great spot to be in. Let's start this off. Let's see what our opponent is doing. One land, I cannot keep this. We're gonna go ahead and mulligan this against an unknown opponent. If we had the second land instead of this chalice, I'd probably keep it. But having one land against someone, we don't know what they're playing. Not a good idea. All right, we're going to mulligan. Uh, this is a better hand. We'll go ahead and keep this. Uh, bridge can stop something, and then we'll see if we get one of these uh, Planeswalkers out. We'll keep any land. We'll bottom Karn. Opponent also mulled. Or no, they did not. They're revealing Chancellor of the Tangled. It's not a good sign for us. Chancellor of the Tangled. Turn one. Botanical Sanctum. Do you just win, opponent? Looks like Neoform. Allosaurus Rider. Simeon Spirit Guide. Eldritch Evolution. Gets Gristlebrand. Uses Gristlebrand. Am I not going to get to play <laughs> Magic? <laughs> Draws twice with Gristlebrand. See if they can continue. They cannot. All right. <laughs> ritual off the top is kind of what I need here. I need a ritual off the top to get the bridge out. Feels a little awkward to be requiring a ritual or we lose here. And a lightning storm. Ooh. We hit our ritual. The, the big question here is, I think them needing to draw seven is important here. So we're gonna go ahead and just play this out. We might have a chance. <laughs> you do broken things, opponent. I do broken things. Woo, all right. Opponent's turn. Please do not kill my bridge, thank you. Getting rid of Lightning Storm makes me think they want to do Laboratory Mania. Nourishing Shoal. They can't attack us, but if they have enough Nourishing Shoals, they might just be able to do this anyway. Noxious Revivals the Nourishing Shoal. It is now on top. And a Braid would be pretty good, although I'm pretty confident they have a lot of other cards that will prevent it from being cast. Opponent draws some cards, Nourishing Shoals again. Going up to 19, plays land, it draws. This might be a quick, quick game one. Nourishing Shoals again, so they have enough. Uh, do they have enough? I believe they have enough now to go ahead and draw the entire deck, and then they just need to play the Laboratory Maniac. Draws. I believe they can draw twice more here. Draw and draw. 
I don't believe they've used any mana morphos, and the deck usually runs them, so that would be the last few draws here. Simeon Spirit Guide. Go ahead and unyield here just to see what's going on. Laboratory Maniac. It's a 2 2. They've used two Nourishing Shoals here. I expect them to have two more. They don't just win yet. They need another Nourishing Shoal. That being said, I'll need like three, four turns. <laughs> they might just naturally draw out of this and deck themselves. All right, another Nourishing Shoal here. I'm just going to have six. It's two draws with Gristlebrand, and that should be game on turn two here against our Neoform opponent. Almost had it turn one. Um... Almost had turn one. Let's go to sideboard. <laughs> Let's go to sideboard. Okay. Trinosphere is okay here. Bridge is all right. I don't have. I don't have Sorcerer's Spyglass here. Things that aren't going to do a whole lot. Slagstorm's not going to do a whole lot. I don't think having a couple of braids is going to matter here. Bloodman is okay against them. Chalice of the Void can be good, although it doesn't appear that they are on zero, needing Summoner's Pact, although they did do the Evolution. They did do Evolution. I like Trinosphere. I like Bridge so far. I like Eidolons. I like Hazret. I don't really like anything else. Koth is probably too slow, as is Chandra, honestly, and so is Karn. I'm keeping a pair of Abrades in here just in case we want to kill the Laboratory Maniac, but I don't think that's going to matter. We could probably leave one Koth and one Karn, or one Karn and one Chandra in here just to, in case I hit it. And I don't think bridge is maybe as important here. If I were to kind of go down an extra bridge here, which I could, I could bring in an additional Karn. And if I do that, maybe I can get liquid metal coating going, which is probably our only chance on turn one to turn two. So I'd rather have Karns than Chandra. We can take these six out and bring these six in. I'm looking for Trinosphere or Blood Moon probably in the opener. I can't imagine much else is gonna matter. Bridge is okay, just depends on if they decide to just swing in with creatures or not. We'll play this <clears throat> 60. All right, I would of course love to play first here. So we have Eidolon. But that doesn't stop, stop them. I really need Blood Moon or I need the Trinosphere, I think. I need to take them off of colors that would let them Neoform here. Uh, we're not ritualing out any of this on turn one either, so I'm gonna mulligan this. So we have a Chalice here. We have a late Blood Moon. My opponent mulligans as well here. This is dangerous, but I think Blood Moon might be worth it here. I can put the Chalice on zero as well. In case they try to do Neoform. We're going to keep this. Maybe my opponent will kind of mull enough that Blood Moon can come down. My opponent mulls to five. We're going to bottom the Scavenger Grounds. We're definitely going to put the Chalice on zero here. to stop any summoner packs. We did not see any, but I assume the deck is playing them. So we need to live for two more turns. Them being at five cards, 
makes me a little more hopeful for this. Chalice resolves. Mountain pass turn. This is our hope. We need to live for two more turns. Our fingers are crossed here. Opponent has six cards in the hand. Botanical Sanctum played. And Serum Visions. All right, looks like my opponent's attempting to set some, some something up. <clears throat> we'll see where the Serum Vision. One on bottom and one on top. So a Ritual Effect would be nice here. All right, we'll go ahead and play Chalice on one as well, since we just drew it and passed turn. Kind of hoping that everything doesn't come together here for my opponent. Just waiting on my opponent. <laughs> there we go. Chalice on one down. Opponent gets to untap here. It's moment of truth. Do we lose here? They put one on top and one on bottom. Do we get one more turn? We need it. That we do. Gemstone cavern, gemstone mine, sorry, for my opponent. Gemstone mine for my opponent. Oh boy, here we go. Allosaurus Rider. Neoform? Yep. They have the Neoform. We needed one more turn. Then we get Blood Moon down and be able to shut off the, the colors. Draws twice. And goes to our turn. Okay. Sort of some cards here. I guess at this point I need a bridge or I'm going to die in three turns. I can play this Blood Moon, but it's not going to do me a whole lot of good if my opponent's just going to combo out here next turn. They do have play Summoner's Packs. All right. Well, we got Karn, which is a, it's a bridge next turn. Maybe there's an argument for trying to do this walking ballista in some fancy fashion and try to ping them for one, but I don't think they're going to go to one. Looks like we're going to lose it here on turn three on the on the play. Blood Moon resolves. Just going to F6 through the turn here. We're going to go to 12. <clears throat> my, brother, my opponent is going to attack me and then have 14. They can draw once here, which I guess is something. I suppose if I were to get a land, I could play Walking Blist on too. Kind of make things a little bit awkward for my opponent. Hey, they got a basic forest. And they cycle. Does enter the deliverance. Maybe they're just a little bit shy here. Am I supposed to Karn here? I don't know if I'm supposed to Karn or not. Can hope for a. I can hope for a. Uh, well, I can't Karn now. I'm gonna go to eight. Of Eidolon here. I guess Eidolon's the only play, really. If they gain eight, then they can draw twice, but they can't really play stuff by drawing twice. We'll go ahead and jam Eidolon here and pass turn. I really needed a bridge there, though, I think, to have a shot. We did get this to at least turn four here, which I guess is a small victory in itself. Swings in the air for eight. The other thing they could do is just simply not cast or do anything here. They kill us in the air next turn. They decide to draw with uh, <clears throat> Grissel Brand, though. Drawing once more would be a little bit um, a little bit dangerous. I 
See if they decide to do that. They move straight to discard here. So I need a bridge off the top. A couple Neoforms, a Summoner's Pact, a Chancellor. So bridge or bust it looks like. Legion War Boss. I wonder if there's any way I could trick them into drawing cards with uh, Gristle Brand here. <laughs> Let's just skip our turn here and slam out a Walking Ballista kind of offering for my opponent to maybe draw some cards here. <laughs> but just three solid attacks here with Gristle Brand's enough to kill us. Nothing we can do. We didn't draw our bridges. We were expecting them to more combo off than just simply attack us. But that's gonna do it. Neoform taking us down right at the end. Unfortunately. That's gonna do it though for the challenge. I can pretty much say with certainty that if we're in 34th and we just lost, we're below top 32 unfortunately. Just missing out. Um, kind of had a non-game there, game one and game two. Uh, yeah, maybe we could have done a little bit better with the Karn. Looks like we weren't going to be drawing anything of relevance there. That's going to do it, though, for the challenge. This was the deck that we were playing. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you've enjoyed yourself, thumbs up, subscribe, bell, all the YouTube things. We try to put these up as frequently as we can and as frequently as we play. So be on the lookout for challenges or other decks in the future. And we, as always, stream on Twitch. And we're going to try to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We've had some things stopping us from doing that, but we'll get back on track with that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. Hopefully you enjoyed the challenge matches. Hopefully you learned something here against or for Pyro Prison. And we'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.